my dear students this is a block over block concept one block is resting on the other block both the blocks are having same masses you are applying a force of 50 newtons and what is the limiting friction acting on the block between the blocks you can just see f limiting friction is equal to mu mg so this is mass 10 so at 0 0.5 is a coefficient of friction mu mg is going to be 50 newtons here so 50 newtons acts backwards 50 newtons acts frontwards that means the upper block is fixing on the lower block exactly and both together move both together move with the same acceleration therefore acceleration is going to be applied force by net mass okay applied force by net mass what is an applied force 50 what is the net mass 10 plus 10 both are having 10 kg 10 plus 10 so that is 5 meters per second because lower body is having zero friction because mu is equal to zero given here it is a smooth surface thank you very much my dear students i am going to discuss a wonderful shortcut where you will not get this type of shortcut throughout the internet you can just see here there are two thin prisms having angle 10 degrees and you have to find out the second thin prisms angle A2 you have to find out refractive index mu1 and mu2 for both the prisms is given and our aim is to find out A2 and this is the case of a thin prism for a thin prism you know deviation is equal to mu minus 1 into A but it is said that without deviation there is no deviation means deviation is not present here with this it is understood that A is inversely proportional to mu minus 1 so you write A2 by A1 is equal to mu1 minus 1 by mu2 minus 1 here so A2 we don't know we have to find out A1 is given as 10 here mu1 minus 1 means 1.42 minus 1 is 0 0.42 and here mu2 minus 1 is 1.7 minus 1 is 0 0.7 with this it is understood that 7 10 70 7 6 42 10 10 gets cancelled A2 is going to be 6 degrees here 6 degrees is going to be our answer that's it simple neat as prints let us see the previous year question asked in 2019 in friction this is a rotating drum in which there is a block fixed here and it has been counterbalanced by four forces let us see here the block has been fixed here because normal reaction and centrifugal force acts in the opposite direction that is uh, n is equal to mr omega square and friction upwards and mg downwards that is f is equal to mg you know friction is equal to mu into n so friction means you write mg and mu is equal to n means you write mr omega square so mm gets cancelled here omega is going to be square root of g by mu r which is nothing but g is 10 mu is 0 0.1 and again this is going to be 10 here so with this it is understood that we are getting now root 100 and your answer is going to be 10 radians per second that's it what is the minimum velocity of a car in a circular road so that it will not skid away this is the concept in the friction so just see here uh, friction is acting in this direction centrifugal force is acting in the opposite direction therefore friction is equal to mv square by r and normal reaction is acting upwards and mg is acting downwards here and friction is directly proportional to normal reaction and friction is equal to mu into m okay so instead of friction you write mv square by r and mu into n instead of uh, m you'll write mg so mm gets cancelled therefore v square is equal to mu r goes that side mu rg therefore safe velocity should be okay what's going to happen here safe velocity should be less than or equal to mu rg under root this is going to be your answer this is the safe velocity if the car crosses this velocity it is going to skid away my dear friends this is a previous year question asked in 2019 a block has been fixed here because the drum is rotating with an angular velocity omega then this block has been counterbalanced by friction force which is acting in the downward direction is mg and uh, centrifugal force in the opposite direction normal reaction in this direction therefore n is equal to mr omega square you all know f is equal to mu into n instead of f you write mg and instead of n you write mr omega square here mm gets cancelled you want to find out omega omega is equal to square root of g by mu r which is nothing but g is 10 mu is 0 0.1 and radius of this drum is taken as 1 given in the problem here therefore your answer is going to be 10 radians per second that is c option 10 radians per second that's it
when two prisms are joined together, thin prisms especially, one angle is given, the angle of the other prism, you have to find out, refractive index of both the prisms are given. And you know for a thin prism, the formula is delta is equal to mu minus 1 into A. Okay. And it is said that there is no deviation at all. There is no deviation at all. So that means deviation is not present. That means angle of prism is inversely proportional to mu minus 1. Therefore, A2 by A1 is nothing but mu1 minus 1 by mu2 minus 1. That's it. Inverse relation it is. So A2, we have to find out A1 is already known as 15 here. So mu1 minus 1 is 1.5 minus 1 is 0 0.5. And mu2 minus 1 is 1.75 minus 1 is 0 0.75. So this is, you can write 0 here, 25, 2 times, 25, 3 times here, okay. So 3, 1, 3, 5, 3, 5 is 15 here. Therefore, 5, 2s are 10. A2 is going to be 10 here, okay. A2 is going to be 10 degrees Celsius, that's it. My dear students, whenever triple pulley, triple block cases comes, the shortcut is the middle acceleration... The middle acceleration AB will be average of the side accelerations that is AA plus AC by 2. The same thing is applied for the next case also. Here also you can find out the middle acceleration A3 as A1 plus A2 by 2. This is a simple logic and shortcut here. That's it. So simple it is. My dear friends, let us solve this problem in a unique style where you will not get this method in throughout the internet. Let us go ahead now. This is a plano convex lens in which plane surface is silver. You can just see the image. You can imagine the image. So image of this lens can be seen like this inside the mirror. So as you combine the image, it is going to be a convex lens now. It is going to behave like a convex lens. Plano convex lens, plane surface uh, silver is behaving like a convex lens now. Exactly like that. So, you just use this lens maker's formula, you get the answer directly. So, 1 by f is equal to, there is a focal, I mean, refractive index is 1 by 1.5, that is 3 by 2 minus 1. 1 by r1, what is the radius of curvature here? <coughs> 10. So, 1 by 10. So, this is plus 10. This side it is minus 10 because it is in the opposite direction. So, minus of minus is plus 10 here. So, therefore, 1 by f is equal to 1 by 2 into 2 by 10. So, 2 to gets cancelled, f is going to be equal to 10 centimeters. That's it. So simple. My dear students, this is a case of a silvered prism. Uh, this side of the prism is silvered. A light ray enters from this side. It exactly strikes perpendicular to the mirror side and retraces back in the same direction. When it retraces back in the same direction, you should know one thing that R2 is equal to I2 is equal to 0. This side in refracting angle, emerging angle is going to be 0. That's it. And you know the identity R1 plus R2 is equal to A. And R2 is taken as 0. That means R1 plus 0 is equal to A. That means R1 is going to be A. In the problem it is said that angle of incidence is making 2A. That's it. Simple refractive index formula. Mu is equal to sin I by sin R. Sin I1 by sin R1. I1 is nothing but sin 2A. And sin R1 is nothing but sin A. This can be taken as 2 sin A cos A divided by sin A. Sin A sin A gets cancelled. Mu is equal to 2 cos A is going to be our answer. That's it. Simple. My dear friend, this is the case of angle of minimum deviation. Okay, so this is a concept here, this is a figure in which the angle of prism is given 60 degrees and refractive index of prism is given as root 2 and he's asking us to find out what is the minimum deviation angle and you know the formula mu is equal to this formula which is equal to root 2 given here as a angle, refracting angle is 60 degrees here, I can take this is sin a by 2 which is sin 30. Now I can take here sin 60 plus delta m by 2, sin 30 is nothing but 1 by 2, I will send 1 by 2 to this side, so root 2 divided by 2, 1 times so root 2 times, so 1 by root 2 you are getting, that means this 1 by root 2 is nothing but sin 45 degrees, sin 45, so this angle and 45 degrees both are same, so 60 plus delta m by 2 is equal to 45 degrees, that means delta m is equal to 90, 2 into 45 is 90 and this 60 goes 60 minus 60 the answer is delta m is 30 degrees that's it let us have a unique style of teaching here now this is a prism and that to right angle the prism a special prism in which light ray enters perpendicularly from the side 
from the hypotenuse and it enters into the side and that means what is the meaning it enters perpendicularly means i1 r1 is going to be zero that's it so simple it is now r1 r2 is equal to a you know this identity regarding the prism and you know r1 is going to be zero that means r2 is going to be a and you know refractive index is nothing but sin i2 by sin r2 which is already given as root 3 here so which is going to be root 3 sin i2 by sin r2 what is the angle of prism 30 degrees it is given that means r2 is 30 that is going to be 30 here uh, which is equal to root 3 this implies that sin i2 is uh, sin 30 is 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 go that side becomes root 3 by 2 which is nothing but sin 60 degrees that means i2 is going to be 60 degrees that's it this is going to be the answer so simple it is my dear students, he is asking us to find out the angle of deviation for a thin prism. This is a thin prism. For thin prisms, you remember one thing that sin theta will be approximately equal to theta for small angles. So that's why sin theta can be taken as theta means you can remove the signs here. So once you remove the signs here, what is going to happen? Here, 2, 2 also gets cancelled. Then what is left? A plus delta M is equal to cross multiplication mu into a mu into a so therefore delta m is equal to mu a minus a this a also goes to that side mu a minus a this implies that delta m is equal to mu minus 1 into a so therefore this is going to be our answer that's it My dear students, this is a case of angle of minimum deviation. Whenever angle of minimum deviation takes place, there is a symmetry in the prism. There is a symmetry. What is the meaning of symmetry? Symmetry means I1 will be equal to I2, R1 will be equal to R2. When you draw exactly one middle line, both sides have same dimensions in terms of angles. That is the meaning of symmetry. And you know when symmetry occurs, R1, R2 equal to R, I1 equal to I2 equal to I, and you know this identity R1 plus R2 is equal to A. As both are taken as R, we can take R plus R is equal to A. 2R is equal to A, R is equal to A by 2 and in such situation he has given the angle of prism as 60 degrees, he is asking us to find out the refracting angle, refraction, angle of refraction in the first phase means he is asking R1, so R1 is nothing but R only which is A by 2, what is A? 60, 60 by 2 which is nothing but 30 degrees is going to be your answer, that's it. So dear student, this is a case of plano convex lens. In a plano convex lens is asking us to find out the focal length here. How are you going to find out the focal length? You know lens maker's formula. This is going to be the lens maker's formula. In a plano convex lens, if it is a plane surface, the radius of curvature is infinity. If it is a concave surface, that to whose center is left side. So radius of curvature is going to be minus r. So in this lens maker's formula, you substitute r1 equal to infinity, r2 equal to minus r. This part is going to be 0. Then 1 by f is equal to mu minus minus 1 by r therefore focal length from this you make a reciprocal then you will get a focal length is nothing but r by mu minus 1 this is the shortcut formula to find out the focal length of a plano convex lens so radius of curvature is given as 60 and mu is 1.6 so 1.6 minus 1 1.6 minus 1 is 0 0.6 so 0 0.6 1 times and this is going to be 100 times your answer is 100 centimeters that's it my dear students this is a block over block concept of friction. You can just see these two blocks are having same masses and force is applied on the upper mass. You can just see the free body diagram. Upper body I am taking separately. Friction acts in this direction. As coefficient of friction is 0.5, limiting friction acts in the left side direction, which is equal to mu mg. That means limiting friction acts in this direction, which is 50 newtons. As both are counterbalancing each other, that means the upper block is held exactly on the lower block in such a way that both combine together move forward. You can take a free body diagram of the lower mass also. This friction which is acting left side is having acting like a driving force for the lower block. Driving force is 50 newtons. That means both combine together move forward with an acceleration. As these two combine together move with an acceleration, acceleration is going to be net force by net mass here. Net force applied is 50 newtons. And net mass is both are having 10 kg, so 20. Okay, so 2.5 meter per second square is going to be an acceleration of combined blocks. Thank you.
my dear students, one more similar type of question. But here the force acting on the blocks is 120 newtons. You can just see 120 newtons acts in this direction. Limiting friction between the two blocks because of coefficient of friction is 0 0.5 is going to be mu mg, which is 50 newtons acts in the left side. Therefore, 120 right side, 50 left side. Acceleration is nothing but resultant force by mass of the upper block. So resultant force for the acceleration for the first body is A A. A net force, resultant force is 120 minus 50. 120 minus 50 is going to be 70 divided by 10. Okay. So this is going to be 7 meter per second square. 7 meter per second square for the first block, that is upper block. Lower block. This limiting friction is acting like a driving friction for the lower block in the forward direction. Therefore, F is equal to MA. Acceleration of the lower block, which is taken as AB, is nothing but 50 divided by F by M, 50 divided by 10, which is nothing but 5 meter per second square. So upper block is 7 meter per second square. Lower block is only 5 meter per second square. That's it. Another model for block and block problems. Let us see. The upper block separately have taken the free body diagram on which 40 newtons acts in this direction. The limiting friction because of coefficient of friction 0.5 acts in the left direction because its mass is 5 kgs. Limiting friction becomes 25 newtons here. This limiting friction acts like a driving force for the lower block forward and the for lower block limiting friction is going to be mu m1 plus m2 into g which is 5 plus 10 into g which is coefficient of friction is 0 0.2 therefore limiting friction for lower block is going to be 30 newtons with this it is understood that driving friction is lesser than the friction which is acting on the lower block in the backward direction therefore acceleration acceleration of the lower block b is going to be zero whereas an acceleration of upper block is going to be the resultant force between that is 40 minus 25 40 minus 25 is 50 by the mass which is taken as 5 here therefore 3 meter per second square is an acceleration of an upper block that is taken as a uh, and acceleration of a lower block b is going to be zero because the friction which is backward is greater than the driving friction because of the upward block. Thank you. My dear students, in this problem, a block is fixed on the wall by application of a force which is said to be horizontal force of 10 newtons. Mu is 0 0.2. Okay, and is asking us to find out the weight of a body. Now, this block has been counterbalanced by two opposite forces. That is, applied force. Applied force is equal to normal reaction. Okay, and that means what is the normal reaction here? Normal reaction applied force is going to be 10 newtons here. And you know, friction is equal to mu into n. Okay, friction is equal to mu into n, which is nothing but 0 0.2 into n, which is nothing but 10, which is taken as 2 newtons. Okay, and you know that friction is always counterbalancing the weight of a body. That means weight of a body and friction are going to be same. That means weight is also 2 newtons, friction is also 2 newtons. That's going to be the answer. That's it.